Hello and welcome back to the Cinema Tirana YouTube channel. I am Stefano Tirana. We are a community of Christians from across traditions coming together to talk about movies, media, and the world from a Christian perspective. Today we are continuing the Bible on film series. I think this is going to be the last part for a while. So we've looked at a movie that is biblically inaccurate and doesn't care about the source material, Exodus, Gods and Kings. We've looked at uh, another movie that is pretty biblically accurate and really cares for the source material that is the passion of the christ and now we're going to look at a movie that is um semi-biblically accurate but has a great care for the source material and that is the beloved dreamworks film the prince of egypt so this film has a, a very special place in the hearts of many uh this film came out in the late 90s early 2000s and if you were a kid growing up then or a kid growing up now this film uh, and you grew up in a uh faithful uh christian family or maybe even a jewish one that's something i don't know <laughs> you know faithful christian family i'm sure you were probably exposed to this film and uh, this film is, is incredible in terms of its actual quality. For example, um, the cast is absolutely star-studded. Um, Val Kilmer, Ray Fiennes, Michelle Pfeiffer, Sandra Bullock. It's a real who's who of a cast. And the music of this film by Hans Zimmer, the, uh, the musical numbers are, are absolutely incredible. This is... In terms of quality, this film is on par with The Lion King. It, it's it's that incredible of a film. And it was the most expensive animated film uh, made. So um, let's take a, a bit of a retrospective look on this film. Uh, let's be critical where uh, we should be critical, have discernment where we should have discernment. And um, look at where this film succeeds and does not succeed as a uh, representation of the narrative in the book of Exodus. So uh, let's talk about uh, some of the things to be careful about with this film. Uh, this film has a lot of biblical inaccuracies. This film does have a title screen uh, that warns, it's not really a warning, it's just saying that their approach to this narrative uh, took some creative liberties, but was still respectful uh, to the essence of the story. And I think for the most part, that is true. So let's take a look at, uh, like, with some of the main an inaccuracies. And that's um, Moses's relationship with Ramses. So this is a very common thing in Exodus movies. Um, Moses and Ramses are, like, put together as brothers. When that's not really the case in the Exodus story. In the Exodus story, the Pharaoh is, is really representative of... Uh, the gods of Egypt. He is a, a force of evil. In these movies, uh, Ramses is kind of like a, a brother who kind of lost his way. And Moses kind of really deeply cares for him. But that's not really the depiction in Exodus that we see. And that's a, a very uh, fundamental part of the narrative of this film. I think once the film gets going, uh, Ramses' character becomes the biblical uh, character. He does have a great story arc though. His kind of descent, his his Breaking Bad descent is, is really compelling. Another issue with this film is Jeff Goldblum's Aaron. Uh, Jeff Goldblum is quite the character in real life. <laughs> so, um, but his character of Aaron um, takes a massive backseat compared to the, um, compared to the biblical Aaron who, who is a pivotal character in the Exodus. He is the one talking to Pharaoh. He is uh, on the front lines right there with Moses because uh, Moses can't talk. He's over 80 years old. He's very old. And um, in this this film, it's, it's not really like that. Moses is definitely the hero of the film. And he's super young too. I, I don't put him over 30 <laughs> by the time of the exodus. And then there's there's a bunch of little details too. Um, just the way uh, Moses finds out that he's an Israelite. Um, it seems unlikely from the biblical narrative because um, he's put in the care of his biological mother um, for some time that he would completely forget that he is an Israelite. Um, and here we have 
like most Exodus films, he has this big revelation scene where uh, he he's a where he finds out he's actually part of the people that he's enslaving. And the next issue with this film, uh, semi-issue with this film, I'm gonna call the secret meaning of the Prince of Egypt. This is brought forth by another YouTuber called Josh Keith. Uh, he made a really great, uh, excellently produced YouTube video on the Prince of Egypt. And he puts forth this kind of uh, this kind of implicit interpretation of this film, which I think is, is a compelling interpretation. And basically, and basically his interpretation is that um, this film is about believing in yourself and miracles happen when you believe. And uh, that's kind of based in the last song. He uses things like uh, Moses and Yahweh being, being played by the same actor to justify that interpretation and the last song really has that interpret interpretive meaning as well. I think that's an attempt by DreamWorks as a production company to make the story accessible to non-religious audiences as well. It's pretty under the surface in terms of how relevant that is to the narrative, but it's definitely in there. If you're a Christian watching this film or showing this film to your kids, I think it's more important to emphasize uh, God's deliverance, God's uh, active work in the Exodus than it is to say something like, believe in yourself and every all your dreams will come true. <laughs> so let's talk about the good. There's a lot of really good here. Again, it's very uh, respectful to the source material. Uh, number one, the burning bush scene is, it gives me chills <laughs> every time I watch that. Hans Zimmer's score um, is abs it's so, so moving. And um, the character of Yahweh is incredibly faithful to the Bible. That that scene kind of is cut. Uh, certain things are cut out of it for the sake of uh, the narrative aspect of this film. But I think it's, in it's incredibly well done. God isn't some nine-year-old child <laughs> like he is in Exodus, Gods and King. The spiritual aspect of these of this film is done incredibly well. The gods of Egypt are like a, a real spiritual force that um, Yahweh is overcoming and delivering the Israelites from. Uh, Pharaoh as God is, is, a, is a very important theme in this film and it doesn't shy away from uh, any spiritual supernatural elements of uh, of the narrative in in a way that Exodus Gods and Kings kind of reinterpreted it reinterpreted the story through a scientific worldview and that's incredibly refreshing to see uh, from a major motion picture but something that was done really well was the Passover sequence it's incredibly uh, reverential to the fact that this is a um, uh, an incredibly important Jewish practice to this day, and it was an incredibly uh, important practice to Jesus himself. And to see the the reverence and the solemnness portrayed in this film was incredibly well done. So that's another thing that I thought was great. So the Midianites are great. I I think this this aspect of the film is really well done. So the Midianites in the Bible are descendants of Abraham. They're part of um, the nations of Abraham. So them knowing about Yahweh, uh, Jethro being the high priest um, is done really well. And I, I think it's something that's not portrayed in a lot of films. The Midianites are kind of portrayed as like these backwards desert people, which is um, not really the case. It's like Moses is going out to visit his cousins from uh, distant generations. You know, again, the Midianites are complicated because um, because they're also not God's chosen people, so there are some complicated practices with them later on in the Bible. But I think at, at this point, um, Jethro being some kind of like, being wise enough to, to discern God, uh, Moses's uh, life mission and life call, I think, was a really good aspect of this film that I don't think comes out in a lot of films. So in conclusion, this film is, is really incredible. Don't take the whole thing as, you know, as Bible. Be be discernful, be careful of what the film portrays right and what it doesn't. 
just like any other film. But um, the themes in this film are done really well. Um, I think it's like, I wouldn't quite use this as a teaching tool in Sunday school. Due to the inaccuracies, I think, um, you know, training up children in the way they should go uh, definitely include, you know, making them as, as smart and knowledgeable about the Bible as possible. So this film gets a lot of things right. It's a little uh, epilogue. I'm not sure where these films are going to exist in the future. Um, I'm not sure if another big Hollywood studio would take this kind of gamble in interpreting uh, another biblical story to this level, to this magnitude on screen um, in terms of an animated film. And <laughs> just look at uh, DreamWorks' um, more recent films as an example of what's going on over there. So, you know, hopefully this isn't uh, a relic of the past of a of a specific generation. And hopefully we get to see um, a, a really good Bible movie in animated form again. And uh, maybe it's time to see other Bible stories represented. Um, I think like, for the most part, Bible movies either center on the Exodus or they center on Jesus, which is, you know, fair enough. They're the probably the most influential stories in the Old Testament and New Testament, respectively. But there's so much good stuff yet to be explored on film in this capacity. So what did you think of The Prince of Egypt? Was this uh, the, the cornerstone film of your childhood in the way it was for me? Or uh, was this uh, something you saw later on in life? Is this a movie you like? Is this a movie you didn't like? Uh, comment below, let me know. So as always, God bless and thank you for watching.